Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video tutorial, we'll cover how to set up a sine sweep simulation with external loads using the harmonics module of linear dynamics. A pump system in the enclosure is mounted to a simply supported beam structure. The pump system operates between 12 and 18 Hz or 720 to 1080 RPM. It has been determined that an out of balance loading of 60 pounds occurs in the vertical direction. The goal is to determine the maximum vertical dynamic response of the beam structure at its center span. We can conduct a sine sweep test of the out of balance loading over the operating frequencies using the harmonic study type in SOLIDWORKS simulation. The harmonic study allows for an application of the out of balance 60 pound vibration load to the beams at the enclosure mounting locations. The analysis is done in the frequency domain so we can apply the load as a constant such that it spans frequencies from 12 to 18 Hz. The graph for the loading input curve looks like this. The vertical axis is the loading value and the horizontal axis is the frequency. There is zero loading at 10 Hz and 20 Hz and the scaling value is a factor of 1 for full load between 12 and 18 Hz. We have defined a sensor using this point entity. The point will be used for observing the beam midspan response. Later in the setup for dynamic analysis we will choose this sensor for graphing. As a typical workflow for this type of analysis, First, we should check the static response. We know the dynamic response should be some multiple of the static response. Number two, estimate the structure natural frequency. From the static response, we calculate the spring constant, which is the force per unit displacement. We use this to estimate the natural vibration frequency of the structure in the direction of the loading. This will provide a good estimate, which will be compared to the finite element frequency results. Number three, conduct a frequency analysis and modal survey to help determine how many of the structure frequencies should be used for summation in the harmonic analysis. Number four, finally conduct the harmonic analysis with the structure's chosen natural frequencies and the actual loading. Here's the model setup. The beams are assigned steel material and are simply supported on the ends. The mounting pad locations for the pump unit are split onto the surfaces of the beams to provide loading faces for the out of balance loads. Vertical forces are applied here at 15 pounds per pace. The material for the pump unit is custom defined. We chose a density to represent the 1200 pound mass smeared over the entire volume and a stiffness similar to steel. Gravity is turned on to apply the pump unit weight to the beams. The results show the center maximum deflection of the beams is about 0.043 inches. So the system spring constant for this direction is K equals 1260 pounds over 0.043 inches or about 29,300 pounds per inch. Now we'll estimate the structure natural frequency. The mass of the pump enclosure system is 1260 pounds divided by G which is 3.26 pound seconds squared per inch. Here we're excluding the mass of the beams at 70 pounds each because one, the beam masses are distributed along the entire beam axis, which are restrained at each end, and two, because the beam weights are at least an order of magnitude less than the pump weight and are not expected to contribute significantly to the response. The system frequency is about 95 radians per second. This is about 15.1 hertz, which is also 905 RPM. This value is within the range of the dynamic loading frequencies of 12 to 18 hertz. Now for the natural frequency analysis and modal survey. We set up and ran the frequency study and used the default of five natural frequencies. This allows us to conduct a survey of the natural frequencies and mode shapes that need to be included in the dynamic analysis and provide a check on the hand calculation. Here we list the resonant frequencies. We find there's one frequency inside the range of the dynamic loading and all the rest are outside the range. Now let's conduct a survey of the natural mode shapes and frequencies. We do this survey to ensure we are including the correct mode shapes and range of frequencies that could contribute to the response. Since the out of balance loading is in the vertical direction, we should watch for mode shapes in that direction. Here's the first mode shape at frequency 7.1 Hz. We animate this shape and you can see it will not contribute to the response since the vibration is purely lateral. Here's mode shape number two. The animation shows it is an up and down vibration and the frequency is within the dynamic loading frequency. So this shape will definitely contribute to the structure response. 
Notice this vertical frequency of 15.5 Hz agrees well with our hand calculated estimate of 15.1 Hz. Here's mode shape number 3. You can see each beam is vibrating up and down out of phase and the pumping unit is rotating around its axis. This mode shape could contribute to the vertical dynamic loading response, but the frequency is outside the excitation range. Here's mode shape number 4. It also has vibrations up and down, which could contribute to the response, but again, the frequency is outside the range of interest. Finally, here's mode shape number 5. There's a lot going on here, but most of the vibration is lateral, and again, the frequency is outside the range of the dynamic loading frequency. For the dynamic analysis, we conclude that only mode shape number 2 will contribute to the response. For the harmonic analysis summation, it is a good idea to utilize the modes from the first mode up to and including one mode beyond. So we will choose the first three natural frequencies of the structure. Now for the dynamic analysis. We can create a new harmonic study by right clicking on the frequency study and choosing copy to new dynamic study. We create a name and choose the harmonic study type. We do this because linear dynamic studies use the frequencies and mode shapes which have already been determined, thus saving some computation time. Also, it will copy the materials, restraints, and mesh to the new dynamic study, saving some setup time. Now let's check the properties of the study. We can select three natural frequencies. On the Harmonic Options tab, we can run the frequency sweep to cover the anticipated loading. We'll choose from 10 to 20 Hz. Remember, the out-of-balance loading is from 12 to 18 Hz, so the sweep is set up to cover this range. Click the Advanced Options button to expose the Advanced Options tab. Here we see 15 points selected for number of points for each frequency. This is the number of solutions performed both below and above each structure natural frequency. This is a good value to use for most analyses. You can reduce this to 3 or 5 for a preliminary estimate because it will solve faster, but we'll use 15 here. We keep the other defaults and click OK. Next we can specify damping. We'll use modal damping at 2%. This is a percent of critical damping which includes blended material and structural effects. A literature survey reveals linear dynamics analyses use modal damping for steel structures at between 2 and 20%. The structural response is highly dependent on this value, so it's a good idea to attempt to try and bound the response by choosing a low value and then a high value in separate analyses. Now on to specify the loading. We'll temporarily hide the enclosure, select the four pads and apply 15 pounds in the normal direction per item to obtain 60 pounds total out of balance loading. In the variation with frequency section we click curve and edit. We change the units to hertz. and define the frequency sweep of zero load at 10 Hz, ramp up to 12 Hz, hold the load constant to 18 Hz, and ramp down to zero at 20 Hz. This provides good coverage of the natural frequencies of the structure. Okay, on to check the results output option settings. This controls the volume of data written to the hard drive for contour plots of the structure response. Choose the four specified solution steps. We can calculate that there will be 15 steps solved on either side of the natural frequency of 15.5 Hz and one at the 15.5 Hz. So that would be 15 plus 15 plus 1 equals 31 steps. Let's choose an increment of every fifth step. This setup procedure tells the solver to write contour plot data to disk every fifth solution step. If you choose every step, it can take a very long time to finish the solution. The reason is that every stress and strain component at each element and every displacement value in every direction at every node on the model is written to disk for each solution step. The time to finish will vary depending on the size of the model and the number of steps. Many people choose every other step or every tenth step to speed up the solution. Next, we'll choose the locations for graphs item and the sample harmonic sensor set up earlier. The software will automatically save every step of the response for this sensor, which we will graph. Finally, we can run the analysis. The first thing to do after the analysis is list the mass participation factor. 
A general rule of thumb is to observe at least 80% of the system mass participation in the anticipated direction of the response. Here we see the y direction sum is 97%, which is acceptable. If you do not see at least 80%, you should include more natural structure frequencies until you get to 80% or more mass participation. Now we'll generate a graph of the response of the center point of one of the beams at the workflow sensor. We'll pick the displacement, y direction, inches, units, and the predefined point 1. This is the vertical peak amplitude displacement. The graph shows the amplitude of up and down vibration. The value at 14.5 Hz shows 0.015 inches amplitude up and down vibration. At 15.5 Hz, the maximum value is about 0.048 inches. Recall the static analysis with the weight of the enclosure showed about 0.042 inches, so the out-of-balance load at this damping value and frequency amplifies the displacement about 1.14 times. We can develop a contour plot to show the deflection throughout the structure if we choose plot bounds across all steps.